Level up your game with the Corsair Dark Core RGB Special Edition. The mouse features a trio of connectivity options including one millisecond wireless, low latency Bluetooth, or a wired connection. Nine programmable buttons and three zone backlighting can be customized and saved to the onboard memory, and an ergonomic shape ensures hours of supreme comfort and grip. To learn more, click on the link below. What's going on guys, welcome back. So today we're actually gonna be assembling a budget gaming PC in the price range of around $775, which was the cost of everything that you see here at the time of filming. Basically the point of today's build is to build a decent gaming PC that can also handle streaming, uh, particularly with the title Fortnite, as it is the hottest game right now. So hopefully it's relevant enough and some of you guys are interested in building a PC similar to this one. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that we'll actually be doing a streaming test. That'll be a separate video from this one uh, and it's gonna be weird because the, the streaming video is actually gonna hit the YouTube channel before this video does uh, and the reason for that is because this video actually has to live on float plane a week early so there's gonna be a bit of swap time travel stuff going on so hopefully that's not too confusing um, that being said we are gonna do a little bit of gameplay testing with Fortnite at the end of this video so make sure you stay tuned for that so we can check on the performance of the system we've just assembled so starting with the parts here we've got an arrow cool Cylon this is a 50 dollar case and uh, it's so it's super budget it's got a tempered glass no actually it looks like tempered glass but it's actually acrylic and somehow it managed to ship without any visible scratches it's kind of miraculous um, we'll see exactly how long that lasts though uh, additionally we have a couple 120 mounts at the front a 120 fan at the back there's enough room for cable management behind the motherboard tray there's a power supply basement so you can route more cables there for a cleaner looking system proper dust filtration you also get USB 3 at the front and a built-in micro and regular SD SD card reader, which is kind of interesting for a budget PC or a budget case, but okay. Um, and uh, full disclaimer, full disclosure, Aerocool is sponsoring this build as well as the case, obviously. So without them, this build and this video would not have been possible. So, so thanks to them. If you want to check out this case, I'll put a link for that in the description along with all the other components that we have here. Additionally, we have our CPU, which is the AMD Ryzen 1600, a fantastic CPU, still one of the best bang for the buck options on the market, in my opinion. It's got six cores and 12 threads. And honestly, if we weren't uh, making this a streaming oriented PC, we could probably get away with a much cheaper CPU than this one. But uh, the, the multi-threaded element here is really gonna help us out on that live encoding aspect. We also have an Asus Prime B350 Plus motherboard, a tried and true option in my experience personally that uh, is also going to be able to get us uh, some pretty decent overclocks with our CPU. It's got all the connectivity we'd also need for a budget gaming PC. Memory, we have a dual channel 8 gigabyte kit of G-Skill RipJaws 5 DDR4 at 3200 speed. And remember, memory frequency is very important when it comes to a Ryzen-based system because of its integration with Infinity Fabric and how it works in the Zen architecture. If this was an Intel-based system, we probably could have gotten away with a cheaper slash slower kit. But uh, all things considered, this should actually help our frame rate out quite a bit. Our graphics card is the GTX 1050 Ti from MSI. Now, I don't have the actual retail packaging for that card, so we're using a 1050 box with some slight modifications there, as you can see. Um, but this is a great card. It's got a four gigabyte frame buffer. It should be plenty for Fortnite, as I think the recommended specs is a GTX 660 on the GeForce side. And since we're several generations ahead here with a Ti model of the 1050, I think it's gonna be just fine to tear through some frames in that particular title. It's also one of the cheapest 1050 Ti's you can find right now on the market across Amazon and Newegg. I think the retail price was $220 on Newegg, um, which is at least 10 to 15 bucks cheaper than all the other models I could find. We also have a 550 watt power supply from EVGA. There's no other gaming oriented branding here. It's, it's more of a budget entry level unit, but you still get 80 plus bronze certification and the cables are all sleeved in black. So even though we have a budget system here, we don't have to compromise with any nasty ketchup and mustard cables, thank God. And then finally, we have our storage down there in A55, 256 gig silicon power SSD, which we're gonna be putting our operating system and frequently used applications onto. I've actually used this SSD in a recent build and I'm using it again here, so just sort of recycling it because it's one of the cheaper options that you can find at that capacity. I think it was only 64 bucks at the time of filming, which is fantastic price, price to gig ratio. And then finally, we have our one terabyte mechanical hard drive in the form of a Seagate Barracuda for our games, of course, and other backup media files. And those are all the parts for the build, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I'll put links to all the stuff in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get assembling this PC before diving into what's hopefully a smooth and enjoyable Fortnite experience.
right, the build is complete. You can see I've already jumped into Fortnite, not wasting any time here, uh, and I've already died. I'm actually spectating one of my squad mates, just a random dude. He's probably much better than I am, so it'll, it'll at least be more interesting to watch him than me. Uh, and we still get a look at the performance that we're getting on this PC. Um, for, for the record, we're using high settings. Uh, the way uh, Fortnite works, you can go low, medium, high, or epic. Uh, I didn't really see a huge difference, visually speaking, going from high to epic, but it did tank our frame rate quite a bit so I didn't really see a point in going epic, so that's why we're on high. Still looks beautiful, everything looks really crisp. We're, of course, at 1920 by 1080 here in windowed mode. And we also have a frame rate here, uh, our, our fraps counter, anywhere from 60 to 80 FPS, depending on the scene that we're looking at, um, which is fantastic. And when I was playing, I actually gamed for a good half an hour or so with the current settings, and it's really smooth. It's super, super smooth. Of course, we're not streaming yet, so uh, time will tell to see how that holds up, but everything's looking really good so far. I did want to mention that uh, instead of the, the Ryzen 5 1600, I actually had to swap it out for a 1600X. You can see here in Hardware Modder, it's actually the XQ because the 1600 that I have on hand didn't realize or I completely forgot that it's in use at the moment, and it's, uh, it's actually not very convenient for me to get to it right now, so uh, that's why I had to swap it out for the X, but this is overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz which a non-X 1600 should be able to hit no problem unless you get really unlucky and you have a below average chip. Uh, but for the most part, you shouldn't see really any performance degradation or difference for that matter uh, going from a uh, 1600X to a 1600 given our current settings. Now, what will change with a 1600X is your temperatures because now we're dealing with a 95 watt TDP chip as opposed to 65 watts, which is why we're kind of getting warm here at 81 degrees C, um, which is a little bit toasty for, for my my liking. Uh, rest assured, I would say anywhere from a 5 to 10 degree drop could be seen going to a non-X uh, 1600. Of course, we'll verify that later. Our memory, you can see, is running at 3000 megahertz as opposed to 3200, which is what we were striving for. That's because 3200 speed RAM was crashing the game non-stop. I would play for about 30 seconds, I'd get into the game, and then it would crash every single time. It took me a long time to figure out that it was actually our memory causing the issue. Um, just the actual frequency was too high. I'm not sure if it's an incompatibility thing. Thing, or uh, it's just not playing nicely with, with the game. Could be a little bug in the game, who knows? But dialing it down to 3000 megahertz doesn't affect our frame rate all that much going from 32, and uh, it does allow us to, to play the game very stably. So that's what we're running at there. As far as our GPU goes, I did overclock our 1050 Ti with a 170 megahertz offset on the core clock and a 300 megahertz offset on the memory clock. Uh, that took us to around 1650-ish megahertz, give or take, kind of is fluctuating there. Um, and then memory speed is uh, at 1752 megahertz. GPU temp is 69 degrees Celsius, which is uh, pretty solid, no red flags there, and it looks like we're eating about two and a half gigs of VRAM at the moment, so plenty of breathing room there. But wrapping things up here, the system is looking really capable so far. If you're just looking to game uh, with some Fortnite at 1080p, obviously the performance isn't earth shattering, but it's very playable, very, very smooth and enjoyable. I think anyone's gonna be really happy with this level of performance. Uh, obviously the 1600X is getting a little too hot for my liking, I'm definitely gonna be swapping it out for the 1600 when I start streaming, uh, which again, that video should already be up on the channel, just so we don't overheat, but everything else is looking really good. So guys, let me know what you think, uh, if you would do anything differently with the build itself, what you think of the performance so far. Uh, I'm sure you guys have an opinion as always. Leave it down below, I'd love to read all about it. Apart from that guys, toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it, uh, it always helps. And feel free to get subscribed to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. You can also check me out on Floatplane if you wanna watch my videos a week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll leave a link for that in the video description. Apart from that, thanks again for tuning in. Have yourselves a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.